Have you thought about changing the design software you currently use because it lacks capabilities, it's too restrictive, or it isn't evolving with your industry? But have you been hesitant to switch, worried that it might be too difficult to learn something new? Well, don't worry, it won't be if you follow the guidance I'm going to share with you today. Hi everyone, my name is Neil Barman. I'm an architect in British Columbia and an architect product specialist at Vectorworks. Today, you'll hear about how to learn new design software and succeed with it. And when you make that move, you'll gain a lot of benefits that will make your design workflows way better, let you see your projects in whole new ways, and help you deliver great material for your clients. Today, I want to talk to you about leveling the learning curve of changing your design software. Specifically, I'll be looking at the small steps you can do to have success as you make the move to Vectorworks Architect, but you can apply the techniques I'm going to share with you to pretty much any other kind of software. I initially came from a hand drawing background and then made my way to CAD software and soon discovered Vectorworks. I used it for 2D only for many years. One day I decided to make the move to working in 3D and doing building information modeling, or BIM. I still remember the learning process well. It was a challenge for sure, but it was absolutely worth it. It allowed me to expand the ways I could design, visualize, and present projects. It helped me make my workflows more efficient, and it improved design coordination. My clients loved being able to see their projects in new ways during the design phase, and they definitely appreciated a smoother construction phase. Since that time, I have trained many other people to use Vectorworks. Most of those people have come from other applications where they've been doing only 2D or only 3D freeform modeling or BIM in quite restrictive ways. Since you likely also have this experience and knowledge already, I want to help you be more equipped and feel more confident about changing your design software. First, before facing the learning curve of switching, people sometimes wonder why they should even consider switching. Why not just keep using the same software they're used to? Well, there are a number of important reasons. Switching to a more capable application than what you may be using now will equip you with a design tool that lets you do more than what you are doing now. Or, if you are already doing 2D, 3D, and BIM, each in different applications, switching to a single, more complete design and documentation tool will save you time, money, and effort. You will save time with more efficient design workflows that are easier to work through than regularly importing and exporting between different apps. And you will save money versus maintaining several different applications. Another reason is, the industry and the profession are evolving. And sticking with a basic, single-purpose application, especially one that isn't evolving, will limit how you design and what you can deliver. On the other hand, Using a more capable and versatile application that develops features based on industry demands and your feedback will give you design freedom with a future. Also, today's clients are expecting more than simply providing them with 2D drawings, and considering we are spending their money on their projects, they deserve more. We know that 2D drawings are what have facilitated so many projects to be built up till now, but we also know that many clients may not understand 2D drawings like we do. They may not be able to visualize a finished project simply from 2D drawings. And 2D drawings, which have typically been created and coordinated very manually, can be prone to human error and omission, resulting in more time and money spent during the construction phase to correct those mistakes. Instead, with an application like Vectorworks, you also have documentation freedom to deliver what will be appreciated by clients and what will get projects built, and it's all from one coordinated model of your design. I realize that these are all points you may have heard before. It's because they are vital and true. And once you make the move to using an application that lets you decide how you want to design, you will have trouble remembering why you didn't switch sooner. Now, while those are all benefits that would be great to have, you may feel that actually switching from your current software to Vectorworks will be too challenging. I can assure you that it's not. You already know how to design, you already know how buildings are built, 
and you already know how to use at least one application to get your projects documented, albeit perhaps with a lot of effort. All you need now is to learn which buttons to push in Vectorworks to create your design and its documentation. And first, I want to provide you with some guidance to help you get there. In order to make this move, it helps tremendously to be open to learning something new. New software is going to be different than what you are using now, and that is okay. New terms, techniques, commands, and icons are going to present themselves to you. Just be open to taking it all in and seeing how they can work for you and how you can work with them. Also, be patient with yourself. Adult learners such as yourself can sometimes be hard on themselves because they feel like they should be proficient with tools, especially software, the moment they get started with them. Like learning anything new, an instrument, a language, a recipe, be kind with yourself as you explore and experiment. Initially, you will not be as quick with the new software as you are with your current software, but that is not a reason to not proceed. Be patient with the software. Vectorworks is very capable software that can be used in basic or advanced ways. I would suggest taking a trial and result approach. Whenever you try a new tool or command, watch and see what happens. This will help you learn how each technique, each tool mode, and each setting affects changes in your model and your drawings. As you learn and grow into the software, assume it can achieve what you want to create. Just take the time to find out how it does it. There are many resources and lots of assistance available to help you learn. And remember that new, unfamiliar techniques will easily become habit with a little bit of practice. And one last bit of guidance for now. I highly recommend that you make the time to learn more about Vectorworks. When new versions and updates are released, make the time to read about what's new. Every now and then, on your own schedule, choose a new tool, tool mode, or command that you haven't used and suspect might benefit you and learn how to use it. You never know when you're going to uncover your next favorite technique. On the practical side, one recommended way to start using Vectorworks is by replicating in Vectorworks, an existing project you have already completed. If you can take the designing part out of the learning process, then you can focus on just learning the design tool itself. Another recommended way to start is to use Vectorworks for a smaller or simpler pilot project. If going this route, you'll be giving yourself a more basic scope of building elements, and in turn the new tools and commands in Vectorworks, to start learning. If you are a sole practitioner or in a small firm, one of these ways of starting may be just enough to enable you to do your next new project in Vectorworks. And as you keep working in Vectorworks, you will build new habits, confidence, and speed. If you are in a larger firm, I would suggest that the route to take is the smaller pilot project one, and the way to do it is with a smaller group of team members rather than the entire office. Ideally, these would be your colleagues who feel the most open and ready to learning a new software, and who will make notes to help the rest of the team make the move next. By doing this as a small team on a smaller project, you'll be learning with others who you already know, and the project itself should be easier to design and manage. Another way to start using Vectorworks is starting with an imported sketch or drawing that you want to develop into a project. While you can certainly design right within Vectorworks, taking the design part out of the learning equation will, as I mentioned earlier, let you focus on learning the software. For example, imagine trying to write an original song and learn to play the instrument you want to play it on at the same time. That's a lot to expect of yourself, so I recommend keeping this process as simple as possible. This is the approach we're going to take shortly, so now, Let's get into using Vectorworks. When you first open Vectorworks, you'll see the home screen, which is your hub for accessing your existing files, creating new files, learning new things, and receiving news about Vectorworks. First, 
I'm going to start with a new blank file and get right into some drawing. Here, I want to point out the user interface for a moment. This is how it looks when you first start working in Vectorworks. And these are the various parts of the UI. I'll give you a moment to look around. While this is how it looks to begin with, an important aspect of Vectorworks to keep in mind is that it is easily possible to customize the user interface, or workspace, to your needs to access tools and commands in a variety of ways. I'm going to show you these as we go. This allows you to choose how you interact with the software and even how it looks. One detail I want to mention right away is that my drawing units are shown in the rulers and in other locations in millimeters because I'm in Canada. Your Vectorworks will display units in whatever measurement system your computer is set to or whatever you have set Vectorworks itself to use. To customize my interface a little bit, I'm going to switch from the Design Suite workspace to the Architect workspace. This slightly changes the tool palettes and menus to be more architecture-centric. First up, I'm going to use some tools here in the basic tool palette to draw some 2D shapes to give you a sense, generally speaking, of how objects are created. No matter what software you're working with now, I expect you're doing something similar, but it will still be good to see it in action in Vectorworks. Do note that Vectorworks is quite icon and menu oriented, but keyboard shortcuts are available for most tools and commands if you prefer to use those. So quite simply, you would select the tool on the left by default, then draw in the center area known as the drawing area. Drawing is done by clicking to start, moving your mouse, and then clicking to end by default. This is as opposed to clicking and holding while you drag your mouse, then releasing to end. But again, you can change this behavior if you wish. Now that I have a few objects drawn, I'm going to look around my drawing area a bit. To do this, I can pan by holding down the space bar to activate the pan tool. Note that my pointer becomes a hand icon, and when I click and drag with my mouse, the view moves. If you have a multi-button mouse, you should be able to assign one of those buttons to take care of what the spacebar would do. The other common navigation action is to zoom in and out, and you can do that using the scroll function of your mouse. In order to automatically zoom to fit all objects, or all selected objects, in your drawing area, you can use the Fit to Objects button in the view bar. To ensure that you are connecting to or referencing precise locations of already drawn objects when you start to draw new objects, there are a number of snapping options available. Right up here, you can see the snapping options I have set up. You can adjust yours as you wish. There are several options available for snapping to objects as well as extension lines from objects. Perhaps your most used tool in Vectorworks will be the Selection tool, which is the arrow icon in the top left corner of the basic palette. You can use the Selection tool to select, move, and resize objects. The keyboard shortcut for this tool is the X key. I can now assign colors and thicknesses to the outer lines, or pen, of objects, and colors, among other attributes, to the fills of objects using the Graphic Attributes palette. I can also change their opacity, and I can even give them drop shadows. And like many illustration programs, the objects can stack or appear in front or behind each other. They can also be added together or subtracted from each other to create complex shapes from simple ones. Over on the right, in the Object Info palette, I can see other kinds of basic information about the objects. For example, their size and area, what class they're in, what layer they're on. Using basic shapes like these can be a way to start into arranging the programmatic elements of a project at a conceptual stage. And from there, push-pull modeling can be done to create concept massing studies. 
Now, a bit about classes and layers. Classes are what objects are. It's their classification as a type of object. For example, walls, furniture, fixtures, appliances, etc. In terms of the 2D graphic attributes, I can set colors and line weights manually as I was just doing, or I can assign these attributes according to each class. Then, the classes can control the 2D attributes consistently throughout the file if you wish. Now layers. These are where objects sit. It's their place, if you will. Their location in vertical space, like a main floor, a second floor, a third floor, etc. It's like having a different piece of trace paper for each floor level. This matters in Vectorworks because it lines up objects from one floor to the next, and ultimately it helps you build your building virtually. Classes and layers are the main ways to organize your objects in Vectorworks. Being as important as they are, there are a number of methods to access them. These are a few of the main locations. From the navigation palette, from the view bar, and from the organization dialog. These aspects cover the basics of what you need to simply start creating objects. Clicking, drawing, navigating, graphic attributes, classes, and layers. Now, starting from a simple example template that I've prepared for this session, I'm going to create a small project. A template is almost a blank document, except that it's been pre-set up with some of the basic aspects of the projects that you typically do. It's a head start into your projects. Having a template saves you both time when you start and throughout a project, and it helps with having consistent files and drawings from one project to the next. One of these aspects are the measurement units with which you work. I'm in Canada and I'm used to working in either metric or imperial, but today my template is set up to use imperial. Next, I'll import a base sketch that I did in another app on my iPad. You can just as easily import a hand sketch that you've done on paper and photographed. There are lots of import options and if you find that you're working with base material that may change from time to time, you can even reference that material instead. This will set you up for being able to have the newest version of base material shown when you get those updates. If you were working in a basic 2D CAD application, you would have to trace every single line and shape of every single building element. But instead, in Vectorworks, I would recommend tracing the walls of the sketch using the wall tool. Like other tools, it does have its own button, but another way to access it is via the quick search. Walls have 2D line work and a fill. If you want to draw with a wall style that shows the wall assembly, we have those too, and you can easily make your own as you need. And, like most tools in Vectorworks, there are different modes to the wall tool. These modes affect how or where you click to draw the objects. Other options in this bar are typically drop-down menus to access styles for the objects and buttons for other tool preferences. Notice the object info palette again, this time with a wall selected. The info shown is all related to the wall, such as its height and thickness. If you would like to adjust anything related to an already drawn wall or other object, this is where you can do it when you have that object selected. Similar to adding a wall using the wall tool, there are dedicated tools or commands for all building shell objects. In the next sequence, I'm going to add some doors and windows. This time, I will access these tools via the Smart Options display, a heads-up display of tools that appears right at your cursor. Once you have clicked on each tool, you can insert their respective objects into place by simply clicking on where you want them in the wall and clicking again to set their direction. Vectorworks will automatically create the correct openings to fit them in the wall the first time, and the openings will automatically adjust as needed if you resize them. And similar to walls and many other objects, you can have pre-made styles of these objects close at hand to insert. 
I've gone ahead and finished drawing the walls, windows, and doors, so here is a more complete plan. I've worked out the sizing of spaces from the original sketch in order to make the plan work. I've also added millwork using Vectworks cabinet tool, and I've added some plumbing fixtures. To add furniture and other symbols, which are repeated, identical objects, to the design, I'm going to open the Resource Manager using Command-R on the Mac. It's Control-R on Windows. The Resource Manager is your gateway to symbols and other resources such as wall styles, materials, textures, and so on. We have lots of pre-made resources ready for you to use as is or customize to your liking. I'm going to do a search for the kind of pieces I'm looking for, and the results of the search are shown in the center pane. When I see objects that I'd like to use, I can simply drag and drop them right into the design. You can also compile your own collection of resources, so they can be quickly used again and again in your future projects. Now that I have this much designed, I want to show you an important aspect of Vectorworks. It's hybrid work environment. By hybrid, I mean that objects can be both proper clean 2D and detailed 3D at the same time. In the 2D view, you get a great looking hard line drawing and that becomes your traditional documentation. In 3D, you get a view of an actual 3D model, which you can use to enhance the documentation of your design. You can work in 2D or 3D. You can select any object and make adjustments as needed in 2D or 3D. And as you can see, moving or editing an object in 2D is reflected in the 3D view and vice versa. This means you can work in whichever view you wish, 2D or 3D, and you are simultaneously working on and affecting both. Of course, being able to work in 3D means knowing how to navigate in 3D is important. Similar to navigating in 2D, you can pan and zoom using the spacebar on your keyboard and the scroll functionality of your mouse. In 3D, you have a few other navigation methods, such as flyover and walkthrough. And while you are getting comfortable with 3D navigation, if you ever find yourself with a view you didn't expect, there are preset views available that will easily return you to a familiar point of view, and you can fit all the objects you've drawn within your view. Once you have a design at a stage you would like to present, this is where sheets and viewports come in. Sheets are, as they sound, the pages from which you'll make PDFs or prints. You can make sheets any size you wish. In the template I'm using, I already had set up a 24 by 36 or Arch D size sheet. And on it, I already put a title block. These are two more ways to speed up your work and to make your deliverables more consistent. To get views of your design, whether they are 2D views or 3D views, onto Sheets, you can specify those views while looking at your design layer. Set up the view you would like to present, then create a viewport or a window to that view that you send to the sheet where you want it to be seen. You may then arrange those viewports on your sheet as you wish. Each viewport has a built-in, scale-aware annotation space where you can add dimensions, notes, drawing labels, data tags, etc. Once you have a sheet looking the way you would like to present it, you may print or create a PDF from it. When you have multiple sheets to create output from, you can use the publish command to accomplish that. And there you have it a simple design sketch as the basis for the project, parametric building objects to develop the design, resources added to enrich the design, then 2D and 3D views placed on a sheet and ready to show. Today, I've given you some basic information about using Vectorworks. There's a lot more information available and in a variety of formats to help you make your move and level the learning curve. I'm going to go through the various related resources that are currently available. 
keep in mind that we are continually making new material to assist you. Now, to aid you with your learning. First of all, we have the onboarding paths at Vectorworks University. These learning paths are designed to help you get to know Vectorworks and get you up and running quickly. Also at Vectorworks University are the Core Associate Certification and the Architect Certification. These more in-depth courses will help you master Vectorworks core and architectural features. They take what I've covered today and go much further. And of course, at Vectorworks University, there is lots of other material too, including sample files that you can check out to see how completed projects are organized and built. Also, accessible directly from Vectorworks, we have the online help system. This is the equivalent to a manual, but a lot more. It has instructions on how to use all the tools and commands in Vectorworks. You can look these up individually, or you can read about tools and techniques in the context of workflow collections. Also close at hand right in Vectorworks is another great way to get to know tools and commands. I'm referring to the What's This command. When you select this command from the Help menu in Vectorworks, your pointer will have a question mark added to it. The next tool icon or menu command you click on will trigger your web browser to open and go right to the online help system page about that tool or command. This saves you having to search for it manually. To connect with other Vectorworks users, we've got the community forum. The forum is an online message board where you can ask questions and seek answers from Vectorworks users around the world 24-7. We also hold regular Vectorworks coffee break sessions. These are casual, how-to type training sessions focused on a particular topic or workflow. Past coffee breaks are available to watch at Vectorworks University. And of course, if you ever need it, we offer custom training catered to your specific questions, workflows, and needs. This paid training can be arranged through our customer success team. I would also like to share with you a couple of articles to inspire and inform. The first is about East Lake Studio in Chicago and their story of switching to Vectorworks. The second is on what you need to know about getting started with Vectorworks Architect. Some of what I've covered today is in that article, but it has additional info too that I think you'll find useful. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me. I hope the info I shared gives you the perspective and building blocks to make your move towards working smarter. I encourage you to put the time in to evolve and improve your workflows. For more design information and valuable tips, subscribe to our channel. I wish you the best in your journey. Bye for now.